since this American Rescue Plan passed, more people died from COVID than did before. That's a fact. So it's not saving lives or explain to me how it saved lives. So that is just a misnomer from the get. Our economy is not better today than it was in 2020. It is worse. And I know that because I think in the Army, I've spent a long time, and I'm trying to say this in a nice way, don't pour water down my back and tell me it's raining. And my people in my district do not feel they're better off today. They do not feel like they're safer because of this American Rescue Plan. It's like scoring a touchdown in a college football game, which is, uh, that's life where I live. You score a touchdown and you go up seven to nothing. And you celebrate the rest of the game, even though the final score is 63 to seven. Yes, the American Rescue Plan had some benefits when it first passed. But those benefits have long passed and the actions and policies that we have done since then have added to inflation. Uh, we can tout the workforce. We can tout that unemployment is the lowest and all that. But here's what I know. I can't go to restaurants because they're closed, because they can't find workers to do the job. I think right now we are tone deaf to the cries of the American people, especially those people in my district. We have $5 gas prices, rec record high, which happened long before the Putin invasion. I can point back to the 2020 budget where President Biden said in his budget that he intended to raise gas prices on the consumer. That is in his budget, not my word, his words. Record inflation, 8.6% last seen during the Carter administration. Supply chain issues that persist, the most recent, the baby formula, which we have taken steps way too late, not when we were notified of the problem in the administration, but months after they finally made an effort to do something that a problem that they knew was coming. Grocery prices, talk to your constituents or talk to your people. It is amazing what little foods you bring home in the plastic bags from a grocery store for spending more money than we did just months ago. It is appalling. It, my people cannot afford to eat and live. They have to make choices to feed their kids that they should not have to make. Input costs for our farmers continue to rise, whether that's diesel prices, whether that is fertilizer, tons of different input prices continue to rise, which guess what? Means a year from now, that the cost of those groceries are going to go even higher. A workforce that is still disengaged because of us paying people not to work in this plan. We still, our service industry is especially impacted by this. And if you don't believe that, you can see the restaurants that close at lunch because they don't have enough employees to open up and serve a meal to people a border crisis that there's been no attempt, no attempt to solve. Under President Trump, we had an increasing average wage, and now wages are stagnant or decreasing at best, especially in flight of, in, 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 celebrate, I think not. I think it's time to reduce gas prices. Mr. Moore, what things can we do? I don't really want to talk about the past, and I definitely am not celebrating. What things can we do to improve our economy now? Uh, well, Mr. Chairman, first of all, you know, I don't recall all these supply chain problems when Trump was president. And it makes a big difference. I mean, w look, Donald Trump, love him or hate him, you know, I didn't always agree with his antics and some of the things he said, you know, uh, uh, but he was a businessman. He knew how, how to make things work. He knew logistics. Who in this administration knows anything about business? I mean, Pete Buttigieg, Jennifer Granholm, um, if we're concerned about the supply chain, why would the first act of Joe Biden when he came into office was to kill a pipeline? Pipelines are critical to the supply chain, right? It's, the, it's by far the most efficient way to transport our oil and gas. Why would we take millions of acres of prime oil and gas lands off of uh, limits? Why would we do that? Uh, the International um, Energy Administration estimated that we would be right now at about 14 million barrels of oil a day if we had continued with the Trump policies. You know where we're at today? 11 million. So think about that. We've lost 3 million barrels of oil a day in production at um, $100, $120 a barrel. You're talking about almost a half a billion dollars a day, a day that the United States is losing in terms of our GDP. That's tragic.
That's tragic. So we've got to end the war on American oil and gas. We're all for a clean environment, and we all want to deal with climate change, but shutting off American oil and gas was a really bad idea. Um, I think we need to make the Trump tax cuts permanent. They were success. I mean, everything shows that they were success. We had the lowest poverty rate, the lowest unemployment rate. We had record uh, re revenues um, from on the corporate and personal income tax. I mean, everything, you know, I helped design that plan, so I feel personally engaged with it. But all the claims that we made worked. And the other thing that's really critical that you just said, Mr. Kelly, the one of the big mistakes that we made with under Trump in the first you know, year of COVID under Trump and then accelerated under Biden was increasing unemployment benefits. And, and if you look at our chart on my, in my testimony on page, um, on page nine, I don't know if you have it in front of you, we estimate that if we, instead of increasing unemployment benefits, which pays people not to work, if we had done what Trump wanted to do, which was um, cancel the payroll tax, we'd probably have about 4 million more Americans working today. 4 million more Americans. So let's incentivize people to work. Look, the heroes of the American economy in 20 and 20 and 21 were the firefighters, the policemen, the, the delivery people, the nurses, the people who were working. Why didn't we reward them rather than the people who were not working? It just didn't make any sense. Mr. Moore, my time's expired. I yield back. 